Hello and welcome back. Uh, I hope you have seen the, my first video on the chapter economy and its entity. Uh, in this video, uh, we are going to go further into the topic and we will understand the role of the household and the government, right? So let us quickly revise the thing that we have done so that uh, we can comfortably go for the second video. So I'll show you my first slide where uh, we have seen the meaning of the uh, word economy. I told what actually the word economy means and uh, sometimes some people defined economy as a system of cooperation as well as uh, some people define economy as a uh, mutual exchange, right? So this is something we have done uh, then we have seen what actually the word economic entity means and uh, entities that means uh, classifying the people in the economy into several groups of uh, consumer household farm and government uh, then uh, there are, there was some further uh, classifications of economy that we have seen and this was the uh, diagram that we have discussed that how the entities economic entities like uh, household government and business are interconnected with each other so this is what we have uh, done we have also seen who are called consumers and the important functions of consumer okay so today we are going to start with the topic of household we will first try to understand what is the meaning of the word household and then we'll go for uh, the topic to understand the role and the important functions of household so as you can see on the screen it is written that household refers to a group of people living under a single roof and taking economic decision jointly very simple so in simple term if i say then you, when i look uh, individually into your family if I look individually how you are uh, what economic activity that you are performing what economic activity your father is doing and what economic activity your family uh, members are doing when we are looking into the family members individually then they are called consumers but when we look to a family when we look all the members of the family together and uh, when we uh, uh, see that how they are taking the economic decision then these people together referred to as household so i hope you, now you have understood a uh, little bit that what is the meaning of the word household so household means uh, the group of people who take the economic decision jointly that means you can take the example of your family so when you want to uh, have something your family take the decision together so that is what actually the meaning of the word household is okay so we'll move on further to see what is the importance of household in an economy so as you can see here the first point tell that household are the primary unit uh, of an economy uh, in what sense we say that the household are the primary unit because household are the source of demand they demand uh, for the commodity in the economy and as a result uh, they of course they demand the commodity to satisfy their uh, want and because of this the producers in the economy uh, produces good so any economy the ba basis of the base of any economy is the household because if there is a not a demand for uh, any commodity in the economy or if there is a there is not a demand for the commodity in the economy that commodity is not going to be produced by the Producer. So we say that uh, in this regard, we say that the household are the primary unit. That means it is the household who demands and because of that demand, the commodity is produced in the economy to fulfill their want. Similarly, you can see the second point. It is told that household are the owners of factors of production. Again, this is important for us to understand. Uh, in traditional economics or in traditional economic theory, it is told that any good that is produced in firm or factory is produced with the help of four factor of production. So factor of production simply means the uh, things that is required to produce any commodity. And according to the traditional economist, it is told that land, labor, capital and organization. So these are the four important things we need to produce any commodity. And these four uh, uh, four things is actually called factors of production. So I the point is here that we say that household are the owners of factor of production. Of course, any firm or factory cannot run without a labor. So it is us who are providing our service. We are a laborer and we are providing our, our service in farms and the factory to produce the good. So it is, the, it is from the household that the labor is, uh, uh, labor is employed in the factory and the firm to uh, produce the good. Similarly, if you, can, if you look into the first factor of production that is land, 
uh, land has got a lot of meaning uh, uh, meaning actually in economics land uh, when we talk about land we uh, think that we are talking about a plot of or the surface of the earth but in economics land does not mean surface of the earth in economics uh, land means all the free gift of nature that means uh, all the uh, things that is uh, given by the nature to and that help uh, one way or other to produce the good like for example we can talk about forest forest is also considered as land in economics because uh, from the forest we get a lot of resources or uh, water is also considered as land in economics because uh, that waters one way or other help in the process of production so okay uh, we will have a discussion on this topic that is a factor of production in some more chapters because there, there is one chapter that you are going to go through that is called factors of production and then where there we will go in detail about the factors of production right but for, for time being i'll just concentrate uh, to make you understand that uh, what is the importance of household so as you can see here that we are saying that household are the owners of factors of production to produce any good in factory or the firm it is us who are providing our services and because of our service the good is produced in the economy and hence uh, we are saying that we are the uh, factors of uh, production Coming on to the third role that we see with respect to the household is they are the source of market for various goods and service produced in an economy. Again and again I told that yes, uh, if you remember when I was uh, trying to explain you uh, the importance of consumer, I told that consumers are the source of uh, demand in the economy and at the same time they are the source of diversification in the economy. If you remember, uh, uh, we are saying, we were, uh, I told you that they are the source of diversification, it's because our test and preferences are different, different consumers have different test and preferences and this is the reason that uh, if we look all the consumers together or if, if we are going to look the household as a single unit then the same also applies here that they are the source of market for various goods and services produced in the economy that it is uh, from our side that is the commodity that we demand and because of that uh, the good has uh, some market uh, for uh, for them that is uh, when we go to the market we can buy the good of our choice uh, similarly, if you look for the fourth point, then in the fourth point it is told that household generate revenue for the government. That is a, again one of a very important function of household. It is not that we are only a uh, source of demand and the source of diversification or we are the owner of the factor of production, but at the same time the money income that we are generating uh, by working in factories and firm or working in any sector of the economy, the money that we generate from that money we pay tax to the government. Uh, we pay tax to the government, the tax can be income tax, it can be, uh, yes of course in today's time we, talk, we talked about GST, goods and service tax. So the money that we generate by working or the money that uh, we generate by uh, giving our services in uh, one institutions or other. Uh, from that money we pay tax to the government and that tax is used by the government for the welfare of us. So uh, in this regard we can say that it is the household who also generate revenue for the government. Revenue is actually, revenue uh, actually means the income for the government. So we are the source of income for the government. And uh, the last uh, point is that household are the source of savings. Uh, there is one very important uh, ideology regarding the saving. And it is told in economics that higher the saving in the economy, higher will be the capital formation in the economy. Uh, I know that most of you do not know what is this capital formation is, but I'll try my best to make you understand what is capital formation in short. When we talk about capital in economics, uh, as you can see the word capital here also as a factor of production. And when we are talking about capital, we define capital in economics like this. We say that capital is defined as uh, produce means of production. That means anything that is used in the process of production is called capital. We generally talk about two types of capital. One is called physical capital and the other is called uh, human capital. So physical capital is the tools and machinery that is used in the uh, production process. So what we are, uh, we here by using the word capital, we are only concentrating or limiting ourselves with tools and machinery. So what the point is that household generates savings. The money that we generate after giving our services, it is not that we consume uh, or we spend all the money. We save some part of our money. The money that we save from our income, we save it in bank or uh, any financial institution. 
and the producer uh, and the producers they go to the bank they take the uh, loan from the bank so the bank is able to provide the loan from the saving that we are doing and that money the loan that is taken by the producer is utilized in buying the tools and the machinery so that more amount or more quantity of good can be produced in the economy so we can say that uh, the the money that we are saving is actually helping in the capital formation that is developing the new modern technology or developing the new tools and method of production process so in this regard we are saying that we are also the source of saving in the economy so you can see the uh, five point so household then if if we are talking about the importance of household we can uh, say that uh, we are the primary unit in the economy we are the factors of productions we are the source of goods and services in the economy we we generate revenue for the government and finally we are the source of saving in the economy that helps in capital formation so this is uh, the slide that uh, explain us the importance of household uh, okay so we'll move on further to see what we can see uh, here so as you can see here we will move on to uh, another entity this is a firm or producer and as we know that a producer or firm refers to that economic entity or unit of an economy that produces goods and services we know very well right we know very well that it is the producer uh, who are producing goods and services and the goods and services that is produced by these producer are consumed by us as a consumer or as a household so uh, we can uh, define producer from its economic activity that the producer is doing so producer is producing the goods and services of course one of a primary objective of producer behind producing the, these goods and services is to earn profit so no no producers are there who produces the good uh, for uh, any reason or something like this they produces the good to earn profit right so that is the reason that why uh, how we can define a uh, producer and you can see here the second point tell us that the firm or the producer can take the form of single proprietorship partnership joint stock company cooperative and state enterprise so these are nothing but these are the uh, form uh, form of uh, firms that can be there right so sometimes we see that there is a single uh, ownership of a firm is there that means there is a single person who is the owner of the entire firm uh, so that is actually what we call single proprietorship and sometimes we see that two and three persons are the owner of the firm and together they set up the firm and produce and uh, produce the goods in the economy so that is what we are calling a proprietorship so these are nothing but these are basically the different forms uh, of firm or the producer that we see in the economy right but the most important part of uh, with respect to producer we have to understand the types of good that is produced in the economy and under what category we can classify them so if you look into the types of good that is available in the economy then you are going to find that there are some goods that are available in the goods that are available in the economy which uh, like uh, say suppose if i talk about food crops or vegetables so when we go to the market we find that vegetables are there at the same time we find that the food crops are also there so these are the types of commodity that we see are produced by farmers right similarly when we go to the market we also find that there are some uh, some goods like say suppose refrigerator is also available in the market air condition is available in the market so we find that there are some goods that is available in the market and these are actually called uh, industrial goods so that uh, i'll tell you why why i'm talking about uh, such examples and of course if i am talking about services also then when we uh, want to save the money we go to the bank and we save our money so we take the service of a bank manager uh, similarly when we uh, want to insure our life we go to the uh, agent and we, uh, we take the insurance uh, from him so that is the service of a agent we are taking so the point is that when we want to classify the producer then producer can be classified into three groups the first group is called primary producer the second group is called secondary producer and the third group is called tertiary producer so let us understand what are primary secondary and tertiary producers are so if you look here then primary producers are nothing but pr primary producers are those producer who produces goods by exploiting the natural resources the uh, the produce goods like food crop forest product fishing uh, cattle rearing etc farmer fisherman are the examples etc are the examples of primary producer so the point is the commodities 
that we get by exploiting the nature is actually called primary uh, goods and these goods are produced by the persons those who are called primary producers as you can see some pictures here you can see a picture of a farmer so the farmer comes under the category or the group of primary producers similarly fisherman is also comes under the category of primary producer but if we are talking about a secondary producer then we say that secondary producer or secondary sector are those sector which produces industrial good or manufactured good that means those good which are uh, processed and brought to us like say suppose if we if we are talking about uh, secondary producer or secondary goods then we can talk about clothes so the clothes that we uh, we wear is a product of industry or factory and hence uh, uh, the, uh, that comes under a second we call it a secondary good or the producer is known as secondary producer so secondary producers uh, are those who are engaged in the production of manufactured good and finally we come on to the third type of producer that we see in the economy that is called tertiary producer so they they actually do not generate any goods in the economy but what they generate is the services in the economy so it is not that always we need uh, goods to consume there are services that we need to consume and hence we see that the producers or the person those who produces services ca can be categorized under a heading of tertiary producer like example doctor is there uh, car cleaner is there then uh, we can talk about barbers so when we go to the saloon to cut our hair uh, we do not uh, we consume the service of a barber and hence he is giving his services when we when you, you go to school uh, the teachers are there who are helping you to uh, get educated so teachers are not selling themselves what teachers are doing teachers are uh, selling their services so we are the uh, we comes under a uh, under a category of uh, tertiary producers so there are three types of producer that we see in the economy hope you have uh, understood this so let us quickly see uh, what are the importance of firm or the producer so if you look into the importance then the first importance is it, they are they supply various goods and services we know as we are talking about that it is the producer who produces the good and the services in the economy and because of that we uh, can consume the goods and the commodity of our desire when we go to the market and we demand it similarly producers provide income and employment opportunity this is the second important role of a producer in the economy so many of us many of us go to the factory or the firm or go to our workplace and earn money from there so the employment that is generated in the economy is generated from the producer side so the producers provide the employment opportunity and hence we get the employment and we earn our livelihood so the second important role of producer is that they provide income and employment opportunity finally we'll, we'll move on to the third point if you look here the third point tell that it is the producer who utilizes the resource in efficient manner so the producer use their management skill they use their uh, experiences and with that uh, management skill and experience they use the resource in the best possible manner and produces the good in a best possible manner so this is again the third important uh, role and the function of the producer that we see in the economy as you can see the point the point uh, run like this it is told that producer uses their management skill to efficiently utilize the resource at their disposal to increase the productivity and profit level the producer through their productive activity can make the use of resource efficiently so that is what the point uh, uh, tell us that it is the producer who utilizes the re uh, resource whether it is a human resource or whether it is a natural resource available in the economy right and finally if we go on uh, go for the last point to understand that what is the role of producer we can see uh, a producer not only uh, produces goods in the economy but uh, they generate some export earning for our country also like for uh, uh, we can uh, take some example to understand that how producers are helping to generate export earning right like uh, we know uh, tea, tea that is produced in Assam is exported to uh, outside country yes and when we export those tea to the outside country we get the uh, dollar or we get the foreign currencies from them so hence the producers are the one who are helping the economy to generate export earning and the export earning that we generate by exporting the good from our country to their country these earning are utilized when we import some important commodities from outside the country so the point is like this that india india is an economy 
and we do not generate uh, or produces sufficient to fulfill the need of all the people of our economy so there are some good that we produces but there are some goods that we do not produce we cannot produce because of uh, lack of natural resources or because of the lack of uh, uh, some type of resource uh, in the economy so what we do so we fulfill the demand for that commodity by importing the commodity from outside the country right and for importing we need foreign currencies so we cannot import uh, using rupees so what we need is foreign currency and these foreign currency are earned when the producer in our economy produces the good and export that good to the outside country in this regard we are saying that it is the producer who are uh, also helping the economy to earn ex uh, earn foreign currency so this these are the some important functions that we see uh, with respect to the producer right so we'll move on further of course this is again the last entity that we are going to talk about the last group of people uh, they are called government and the government is responsible for administration they uh, they look after the welfare of the people they look after the administration peace and order in the economy so that is what actually the go government is and uh, if you go through the second point then you're going to find something more about government that government also act as consumer as well as producer so it is not that the government only government in our country only involve in administration they are also involved uh, involved uh, or act as a consumer or act as a producer so if you look here the government act as a producer when they purchase various goods like arms arms and ammunition sometime uh, the government act as a consumer by buying uh, buying or purchasing arms and ammunition from uh, say suppose from uh, outside the country or even uh, from the companies those who produces or from the firm those who produces arms and ammunition so so we know so in this regard the consumer act as a consumer not only this uh, to run the government offices the uh, com government also need computers they need chair and table so what they do they do not produce computer and chair and table they pr purchase it from the uh, factories or the firm in our country so they are again acting like a consumer because they buy those goods and services from the firms and at the same time they act as a producer also producer in the sense what it is not that they only consume they are producing uh, the goods in the economy and at the same time they are also producing uh, services in the economy if i am talking about particularly if we talk about services then you can see that government uh, produces services like uh, yes of course the uh, police service that is uh, administration service is look uh, look after with the help of the police medical facilities there are many government uh, hospitals where the, they are uh, actually selling the uh, health services to the people they are pr providing the health facility to the people street lighting and many other like ed education can also be one of the example where uh, in many government school we find the poor children uh, they go there and uh, they get educated so the government is also producing services as well as the government also produces goods in the economy like if we talk about uh, say uh, that is uh, uh, DRDO defense research and development organization so we know it is a government organization that produces uh, defense equipment so the it the government is also acting like a producer in an economy so that uh, shows that uh, what is the role of the government and what actually the government do uh, and, and you can see here the other objectives of the government like they uh, work for increasing the welfare of the people they work for removing inequalities in the economy inequalities with respect to I may say with respect to money that is we know some people are there who are rich and some people in our country are very poor so to remove this gap between rich and the poor the government work uh, to remove this gap by uh, adopting some technique or other we will have a discussion on how the government try to remove the inequality they the other objectives like growth and development though so they work for the growth of the economy as well as for the development of the economy and for maintaining peace and order in the economy so this actually this slide explain the uh, uh, functions or I mean I will not say the functions this slide explain us who are who are called government and what type of objective the governments uh, uh, have so I hope now you've understood that uh, who are called government and uh, we'll see that uh, what are the importance of government or the functions of government 
uh, you can see in order to understand the important uh, functions of the government we have to classify it into two heading or we have to see this into two heading one is called direct role of the government and the other is called indirect role of the government i'll let you understand what is direct role and indirect role for this we have to go for uh, the sli uh, this slide that is the next slide you, as you can see here we are saying that under the direct role there are many function that is performed by the government out of which some are like this development of basic infrastructure we know very well that in order to run an economy smoothly there are some infrastructure facility some basic infrastructure facility that we need right so the commodity if i say if i take some examples the commodity that is produced somewhere in bangalore is also available in uh, delhi is also available in mumbai or uh, other places of our country only because of the road facility or the transport facility that is provided by the government so the transportation is the basic facility uh, or basic infrastructure that we need to uh, run the economy smoothly or to help the economy to grow uh, at a fast so that is what we are talking about basic infrastructure under basic infrastructure we can also talk about uh, power generation so as you know electricity is a very important uh, uh, resource for all of us in today's time and we see that uh, the government uh, play a major role in providing uh, electricity to us and uh, hence uh, uh, we are saying that the government is helping the economy to develop some basic infrastructure and then education and health are also one of one, some of the basic uh, in uh, basic infrastructure that we need in our life like for example if i talk about health then there are many private hospitals uh, but the all the people in our economy cannot afford these private hospitals because uh, they are very costly so therefore the government also runs some government uh, people can go they can be treated and uh, of course in a very uh, by spending less uh, money or even uh, they are uh, treated free of cost so these are the basic infrastructure or uh, basic infrastructure which is provided by the government in an economy so this is one of the important role of the government that comes under direct role similarly as i was telling you that uh, not only the providing the basic infrastructure is the role but government also play an important role by removing inequalities of income and wealth as i was telling you that in our economy like economy of india we find there is a variation in the distribution of income some people are there who are very rich whereas some people are there who are extremely poor so to remove this gap of rich and poor the government play its role by using some technique or by using some method they always want to remove the inequalities or the gap between rich and poor and how they do this they do this by imposing a tax so there is a there is a type of a tax which is called progressive tax and progressive tax is that tax where it is told that the people those who earn more they are going to pay more money as a tax and the people those who earn less they will pay less money as a tax so what we see that the rich are paying more money to the government and the poor are paying less money to the government and hence in this way uh, to some extent the government is trying to remove the uh, difference in the income between rich and poor similarly there are many many method that is adopted by the government to remove this inequality as you can see on the screen unemployment allowances so there are many poor people those who are unemployed they don't have any work to do for them the government pay some allowances that is uh, cash uh, so that they can earn and they can uh, have the basic necessity of life they can uh, buy the food from that money and they can sustain their life similarly there are many poverty removing programs that is run by, uh, run presently to uh, remove the poverty from our country uh, examples like manrega as you know that uh, manrega is a very important important program uh, mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act this is the full form of manrega so again i repeat m stand for mahatma g stand for gandhi national rural employment guarantee act so according to this program uh, people are given job 100 days of guaranteed job in a year so those people who belong to the bpl ca category that is below poverty line category they are given job 100 days of guaranteed job so that they can earn uh, money from that uh, work they can uh, sub support their life from that similarly we have some more programs like midday meal i hope all of you know what is midday meal scheme atal pension yojana and like this so there 
there are many programs that the government runs so that the poor people can be supported financially. And this is how the government is trying to remove the inequalities uh, between the rich and the poor. So this is again one of a direct role that the government play in an economy. And finally, if I go for the third, as you can see here, the third point, it direct market forces also. Okay, I'll explain you this point. Uh, market forces is no nothing but actually this is a this is a topic which is related to demand and supply. So for time being, you just keep in your mind that the price of any commodity in our economy or in any economy of the world is decided or determined from the demand and the supply side. So it is the consumer who demand and it is the producer who supply. So if if the consumer in an economy demand for 100 units of the good and the producers are supplying 90 unit of the good then there is a there is a high demand and the supply is less so this is going to increase the price of the commodity in the market and uh, in another case if demand is say if the demand is only 90 unit and the supply is 200 unit then of course this is going to reduce the price of the commodity in the market so this demand and supply decide or determine the price but sometime it happened that these market forces or due to the demand and supply condition, the price of the commodity that is determined is extremely high or very high for the poor people to afford. And hence, what the government do? The government intervene in this uh, condition and provide the goods to the poor people at extremely low price by using their one program called public distribution system. I hope uh, uh, maybe you have not heard this word public distribution system, but I'll use a, a common word so that you can understand what is public distribution system. You all know that uh, uh, for the poor people, the government has a facility called, the government has developed a facility called ration shop. And in the ration shop, when these poor people take their ration card, they can get the commodities at extremely subsidized price. So in this way, the government is helping the poor people so that they can have the uh, food or they can have their basic necessity uh, at a very subsidized price or at a very low price uh, from the market. So the, if in, it may happen that the, in market the price of the wheat is uh, say suppose uh, uh, the rice that we purchase from the market is 60 rupees or 70 rupees but in the uh, ration shop the poor people get the uh, those things at a very subsidized price of rupees 2 or rupees 3. So this is the way uh, how actually the government help uh, the poor people to get their living like this Ayushman Bharat as you know that this is another program that is run by the government where the government is providing uh, health insurance to the uh, poor people so health insurance is provided to the poor people so that when they get ill they can go to the hospital uh, they do not have to spend uh, the money from their pocket it is from the insurance that they will uh, get uh, the treatment done so like this uh, this is what actually the direct role of the government developing the basic infrastructure structure, removing the inequalities uh, of income and wealth and uh, of course uh, the government also play a role uh, in directing the market force forces. So the government intervened to ensure equal distribution of resources through the public distribution system and Ayushman Bharat and the many programs like this. So I hope now um, you have understood the direct role of the government. Uh, in some more videos, I'll continue uh, with the direct role and then we'll also discuss about indirect role and uh, hence we can complete. So, right? so there are two more topics that we are still left. So in my next video, I'm going to discuss about uh, some more direct role, indirect role and uh, that is how we are going to complete this chapter. I'll uh, give some home tasks so that you can uh, practice at home and uh, you can. So children, please go through this uh, chapter properly. Thank you.